Hi there, welcome to the third of three videos on Excel for teachers and using Excel in an educational context. Let's have a look at what we've done so far. We've created um, a table and we've inputted information there. The table is giving us some quick, but I think really nice and informative analysis about uh, performance across the cohorts. And in the last video, we had a look at generating these summary measures. So these are measures that give us an impression of what's happening um, across the whole cohort. And really good, uh, simple things for us to understand that tell us what's going on. So in, in this video, we're going to continue on the theme of summary information. And we're going to think about generating things like charts, things that visually represent um, our analysis and the situation, what's going on. Uh, we've got a really nice chart here, and the aim of this video is to allow you to understand how to generate this kind of thing yourself. So again, make sure you've downloaded the practice file from our website. We'll put the link uh, underneath, it, underneath this video and make sure you practice how to do this yourself. So let's have a look at the practice file. Uh, this is the example sheet and you can see that the chart is here. So how would we go about generating this table and generating this chart, which give us a really good snapshot of what's going on? Let's go to the practice summary info sheet and you can see that I've already set up this table for you. So I've used some fairly simple formatting techniques there. You'll notice that um, the green and red colors that I've used for A to C grades and fails, they're consistent throughout the whole file. So that's an example of color uh, supporting the meaning of what's going on, green for good and red for bad. All we're going to do is try to get the summary information we have on the student table into the other sheet, into the summary, in, into the summary info sheet, uh, into these cells here. We can do that fairly easily by just hitting the equals key, going back to the student table, and then clicking on the cell that contains the information that we want to appear in the table. So I've clicked on cell F6, and we can see at the top in the formula editor that it's ready to go. So I'm gonna hit enter, and we can see that, that that information, minus 16, that minus 16 there in cell F6, has appeared uh, in this cell. So that's a good example of how you can combine sheets together to create uh, nice data summaries. So we can simply pull this uh, formula down, and we now have a four and a zero, uh, and that has taken the information uh, below the minus 16 um, and it's just taking it through that. We have to do the same for the other cells. So quickly, I'm gonna go for I6 there. Once again for L6 and finally for O6. Okay, maybe the Excel purists out there will be telling me I could do that much faster using an offset formula. And um, if you're interested in the offset formula, then do take a look at our video on the offset formula. But back to this, again, I'm gonna click and highlight these cells and then just uh, double click in the bottom right hand corner. We can see the square here. That's gonna auto fill this information down. So the information on one sheet we've taken across onto another sheet, created a really nice uh, summary table. I think it's so important in Excel to create this kind of summary because everybody sees lots of numbers, lots of data. It's really important that we pull out the important information, get it um, displayed in a really simple, easy to understand way. I think that's a fairly good way for us to do it. And I also think the idea of a table and a chart next to each other, communicating something numerically and visually side by side is a really effective way of approaching analysis. So we've got a nice um, chart here, group performance over time. Uh, we talked about our four assessment milestones and then we can see a key at the bottom that um, allows people to understand what's going on. So how would we generate that chart? The simplest way, if your data is reasonably well organized into a table as we've done here, we can select the whole table then go to the insert uh, button at the top and go to charts and I fancy a bar chart, a column chart rather, and then just click on a simple column chart and Excel will generate the chart for us. So already it's done a lot of work for us. We still need to do things like putting the, uh, the, the title of the chart in. 
So I'm going to put group performance. And also adjusting the colors so that the colors reflect the meaning of what that piece of data is. Now this piece of data is number of A to C. I don't really think a red color is suitable because it's a positive thing. So a green color I think is more suitable. I've just clicked on those bars. I can go to design or formats at the top and choose whichever color I want. I think a green color is more appropriate here. Okay, so that's how you go about generating a chart. Uh, Excel does a lot of the work for you these days. They've done a really good job of making, ex of making charts really easy to generate. So I'd encourage you um, to get to know them. Great, so we've got a table and a chart. That's our data summary. Let's just rewind and let's go back through the whole process. Uh, we've had three steps. This is a three-part series on using Excel for teachers. And we've generated, we've created um, a progress tracking spreadsheet if you like and originally we talked about how to convert grades so letters into values into numbers once we've converted them into values we can begin to measure them against each other and measure progress things like that so we used a vlookup formula and a grades table that we populated ourselves in order to convert these grades into values next we talked about drop down menus and uh, we implemented a simple drop-down menu here. We can see that. Uh, that's fairly easy to do using the data and data validation. And then we talked about summary information. So we can see at the top here, we generated some formulae to really capture, summarize what's going on to make it nice and easy to understand. With that summary information, we just linked it to a summary page using some very simple uh, formulae that we can see in these cells, and that allowed us to, to quickly generate a chart. So I think this is a really good example of how we can use Excel to help us make sense of what's going on in education, to make sense of student performance, uh, to measure it, but also to generate that summary information. And we talked about what senior managers want to see. I think it's a really good opportunity um, to impress people, a senior in your educational institution, um, with what's going on in your cohort. So think about that summary information, generating those tables, generating those charts. I'd really like to hear what you think about this series of videos, so do leave a comment. Uh, you can get in touch with us via the website, and I really hope they're helpful, and let us know how you get on.